1 Corinthians 14, 18, and 19 say, I thank God I speak in tongues more than all of you. However, in the church I desire to speak five words with my mind so that I might fully instruct others also, rather than 10,000 words in a tongue. Well, if you're joining us in reading through this 90-day reading plan, today's reading is 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 19, and I encourage you to read that passage. After the 2nd century AD, tongues seemed to have taken a backseat to the rest of the spiritual gifts, and it was all but forgotten until the 19th century here in the United States, when in Los Angeles, California, it became the birthplace of the modern charismatic movement. 1905 saw the beginning of the Azusa Street revivals, and Tongues played a significant role in this revival. Eventually, a number of denominations came out of this revival, such as Church of God, Assembly of God, the Pentecostal Church, just to name a few. So this brings us to a point of concerning spiritual gifts, particularly the ones that are flashy, such as tongues. There are a couple of ground rules. First, if tongues are used in public, they must be interpreted, and they must be in earthly language. This is borne out all by the experiences that were shown in Jerusalem just after the Holy Spirit involved in Jordan, the Cornelius' conversion experience with Peter, and the Ephesian experience with Paul. Each time the tongues that were spoken uh, were in an earthly language. Secondly, this speaking must be interpreted by someone and not by the speaker. Someone can go around and mutter gibberish and have someone else say that they can interpret it. But that's not what we have for examples. And Paul specifically lays out that it must be done in an orderly fashion. Finally, it seems that tongues that were given in the book of Acts and these experiences were all unlearned by the speakers. For example, if I was in Europe and worshiping in a church and I spoke in English with some kind of prophecy, that would not be the gift of tongues. English is my first language. Whether or not the prophecy is true is another matter. Having said all of this, I do not want to leave you with the, out, with the understanding or the option that the gift of tongues is no longer existing. By putting God in a box and telling him that he can't do something speaks to our pride and our boldness, not God's. God is capable of doing anything he wants to do, but he has set down rules in which those activities may take place.